I recently watched some videos from Epic History about the Napoleonic area and its naval battles and I really got inspired to do my own blender scene. Luckily I've modeled the HMS Victory, the flagship of Admiral Nelson, which took part in a lot of these naval battles three years ago when I was learning Maya. Recently I brought this ship back into Blender, gave it some new textures, updated the model, so I was ready to use this in a new project. I didn't want to have a full naval battle because I didn't have like a second ship and I also didn't want to figure out all the destructions from the cannons and the ships fighting each other. So I just wanted to have a few ships sailing on the ocean and that's it. In the beginning I wanted this to be a one day challenge since due to my freelance work I didn't really have too much spare time. But at the end of day one, I noticed that with a bit of extra time, I could really improve on that. So I spent an extra day on that to really give it the extra final improvements. The first thing I needed was an ocean. Luckily, I've done my fair share of oceans in the past, as some of you might know if you have seen my past projects. It all starts by adding in a plane and then giving it an ocean modifier. You can then animate the time setting to have the waves move over time. Then it's just a matter of adjusting the settings to get the look you want. Since I've done this so many times I already knew which settings to change and how to get the look I wanted. But you can just look at some reference images online and just experiment with the settings to see what you like. If you want a more detailed explanation of creating an ocean, then there is a great tutorial from Dylan Neal online which explains this in a lot more detail. I added in a cube in the center and scaled it up to around the dimensions of a ship to have a comparison to how big the waves need to be. I then baked this into a vector displacement map which then lets me displace a flat surface. The value you set in the render resolution setting will affect your overall resolution of the vector displacement maps. So a value of 32 will give you a 1K image, while a value of 64 will give you a 4K image. I went with a value of 40. In the new Blender scene I then added in a circle, scaled it up to a dimension of 1 by 1 kilometers, and then used the grid fill tool to fill in the circle, giving it some even tessellation. I then selected the outer edge and scaled it up to a dimension of 65 by 65 kilometers. Then I gave it a new material and added in my vector displacement map. I also added in an empty to control the scale of this texture map. I plugged this into the displacement node and then changed the Blender feature set to Experimental and gave it a Subdivision Surface Modifier set to Adaptive Subdivision. Also in the Material setting you have to set the Displacement type to Displacement only. Of course applying scale will always fix your problems. And then it was a matter of adding in an HDRI because most of the look from an ocean and from water in general comes from the surrounding environment that is being reflected from the ocean surface. So changing the HDRI will give you a drastically different look. Then again I've added in a cube, scaled it to the dimensions of a ship to have a reference of how big the waves should be. I then used a multiply modifier to darken the overall vector displacement map and then used a noise node to mix some different strength into the ocean. This way the ocean doesn't look as boring and gives it some more details. By the way, if you're interested in how I modeled this ship and all its details, back then I uploaded a time-lapse video on how I made this inside of Maya. Again, at that time I was learning Maya since I wanted to get into the 3D industry and the VFX industry in particular, so I was using Maya back then. In Blender I then linked in this ship, which I had in a different Blender scene. I already had some sails in there, which I did for my Sage tutorials I did a few weeks back. You can watch that on my channel. 
For the lighting I removed the HDRI and instead used a UV sphere and scaled it up to fill the whole scene. I then also added in a plane and placed it in the background but still inside of the sphere. Then I gave both objects the same material with an emission shader and added in an image of a sky. This way I have this image in the background to con really control the overall look and clouds I have in my frame, but also get the same values, same color values to reflect into the overall scene and light the scene. It was then a matter of just trying out different images to find one I was happy with. For now I stayed with this sundown image, um, so I place in a sun um, in the roughly direction of where the sun from the image was coming. I like to do some basic compositing very early on since this will really improve the image and keep me motivated to continue working on that. I oftentimes use a simple glare node set to fog glow to give some overall glare to the image. And then I will also add in a lens distortion node to give some blur to the corners of the image and to distort it a bit. This really helps to make it not look as CG-ish and to give it some chromatic aberration at the edges of the frame. I then also added in an ellipse mask, blurred this a bit and then used this to multiply on top of the image to give it a vignette. I then also added in a cube, scaled it to fill the whole scene and then gave it a very low density principal volume shader to give it some haze. This also helps remove this CG look and help blend in the individual elements together. The compositor I then also added in a lens dot image to again increase the realism. I used a blur node to blur the whole image and then used this as a multiply to get the overall colors of the scene into the lens dot. This helps to only show the lens dot at the places where the underlying image is really bright. This I then added on top of the image. I then also gave the camera a bit of animation um, flying towards this ship. This way I then could enable motion blur in the render settings which increased the realism of the shot even more. At that point I wasn't happy with the overall look and overall time of day so I looked through my collection of sky images for something different. At the end I stayed with this noon image of some blue sky with some interesting skies and this meant I also had to update the compositing a bit, changing the glare node and stuff like that. I then duplicated the ship with all D and placed it in the foreground to give this scene a bit of depth. Then I went into a, a different scene and started creating some flags. I made sure to give it enough subdivision and then used a vertex group with the corners to pin these in a cloth simulation. I then did this to all the flags and then added in a wind force field to have them move in the wind. These I then gave some very basic textures of the flags that the HMS Victory would have. These flags I then brought into the HMS Victory file and placed them on top of the mast. I then added some additional sails since I wanted the sails to really bring out the ship and make it look very majestic. If you are interested in how to make the sails and how to get these textures, I made a tutorial recently on my YouTube channel which explains this in a lot more detail. I put the project files including this ship and all the textures onto my Patreon. So if you are interested in getting this final scene and these models, then support me on Patreon. Oftentimes with cinematic ocean shots, the horizon is very blurred. So to achieve that result, I added in another cube and placed it at the horizon line and gave it a principled volume shader. Important here is to go the, to the light paths and set the volume pass to something like 16 or even higher. Otherwise the volume won't blend into the background as well. 
I then gave these ships and the animation forward, but in the final result you won't even really notice that. This was the end of day one. Again, I plan to have this be a one day challenge, but I then looked at the render and had some few changes that I thought would really improve the overall animation, so I ended up spending an additional day on that. So I had two main reasons with this animation. For once, I didn't really like the sails and the amount of details in the sails. And secondly, I didn't really like the ocean because there was a lot of obvious tiling. So I then nearly spent the entire next day trying to figure out a different way of simulating the sails and getting more details in there. But I didn't really get a solution there, so I ended up just tweaking the old results um, giving it some more subdivisions, adding in different wind force fields from different angles, really helping in getting a lot of details into the sails. For the ocean tiling, I just went onto the ocean modifier and just changed the seat to get a different result but with the same settings. This vector displacement map I then could mix with the old one using a noise node to help it really reduce the obvious tiling. I also made sure that the noise modifier that was controlling the strength of the vector displacement map was a bit stronger to really get some interesting ocean look. At that point I found the scene a bit boring so I decided to add some cannon blasts into the scene even though I didn't want to add a full scale naval battle but I thought maybe they were training at the ocean to fire the cannons so I decided to add this. For this I used Embergen. Luckily Embergen has some presets of cannon explosions and they didn't really fit the look I was going for so I experimented with the settings until I had a look I was happy with. This I then exported as a VDB sequence and imported it into Blender. I then placed this in front of a cannon and then made sure that the scaling and start frame was correct. I then duplicated this, changed the start frame and placed it in front of a different cannon. I gave this a very basic principled volume shader, giving it a density of I think 1. I then also went in and animated some recoil to the cannons, but you can't really notice that in the final result. With that done, I started rendering the scene and went to bed. And in the next morning I had this result. I am really happy how this turned out. Of course I gave it some color grading in DaVinci Resolve, but it's very similar to what I got straight out of Blender. Again, if you're interested in this scene and maybe want to use it in your own projects, maybe want to change it a bit, want to give it a different camera angle or anything like that, then support me on Patreon, there you can download the full scene, including the ships and the VDB sequence. Also, if you're interested in working with me, uh, I make sure to link my stuff in the video description for you to contact me. With that said, have a great day. Bye.